it's nice to see you. I'm glad you could make it. I have a serious series problem. I start them and I don't finish them, which what's the point of starting a series if you don't intend on finishing it? There isn't one. You're right. You're right. I have a serious problem with starting series and then getting immediately distracted by A, another series, B, a standalone in rare cases. I'm really a start series and don't finish them kind of gal. And I made it a goal for 2024 to try and finish the 17 plus series that I am in the middle of. And in episode one, we completed three of them. I am now in the middle of 14 or 15, something like that. And we are back for episode two of trying to complete every series that I am in the middle of. I have no idea where this video is going to go or take me or what direction book wise we're gonna go it's gonna be kind of like a mood reading but finishing series that is the rule we are trying to finish as many series as humanly possible we are trying to get all of the series off of my plate before i move on and start a bunch of new ones because i have no self-control that is coming soon top of mind the ones that i'm like anxious and excited to be picking up are two twisted crowns i know I know it was a crime that I have not read it yet. I loved the first one so much. I finished it at 3.30 in the morning. I read it in one singular day and I really considered picking up the second one. And then I woke up and completely forgot about it. That one's really top of mind. And you guys keep telling me that it's amazing and I'm going to love it. And then it's better than One Dark Window. And One Dark Window was a true five star. I want to finish The Serpent in the Wings of the Night. I kind of want to finish The Housemaid because I didn't love the first one. And it's just like sitting there taunting me. I finished The Gilded Cage, the second book in the Prison Healer trilogy, which progress. I might read The Blood Trader. That one ended really well. I'm really curious to see where that one goes. And I've heard the third one is the best one. So that's on the list. Now at this point, I can't think of another single series that I'm in the middle of, even though the list, the list is long. Either way, that's what we're going to do this week. We're going to dive in and try and finish as many series as humanly possible, because if we're honest, I have no self-control. More series will be started, not ended. <laughs> now that I'm done rambling, let's get into episode two of finishing every series that I am in the middle of. An embarrassing number. It's an embarrassing number of series. Picking up the blood trader first i finished the gilded cage like a couple of days ago it just felt like a good opportune time to just wrap up the series the books are really easy to read like i'm already like a third of the way in and i have not had very much time to read still it's still not my favorite series ever to date i really really how do I want to word this? I like it. Don't get me wrong. I'm not like itching to put it down in any way, shape or form. That's not the vibes, even a little bit. The story, so good. It's not something I've really read in fantasy before. I feel like this feels like an original story. Like it does feel like an original story. There's a lot of found family. I like the characters a lot. I feel like it's a lot more plot driven than like character driven, which like I can take both on a good day. I'm good with either. If you haven't heard me talk about this series yet, the prison healer series basically follows Kiva, who is the prison healer in Zalendorf, this really like intense work camp-esque prison. She Meet some unlikely characters. She ends up going to the kingdom. A bunch of things happen. This one is definitely so far the best. The story is really good. It's really interesting. There's a lot of like really interesting, fun magic and like magic systems in this world. The thing I just don't love about this series and like these books in general is I find Lynette Noni's writing. <sighs> She tells us instead of shows us a lot. Like I feel like a lot of times something happens and then in Kiva's brain, she'll be like, and then then this must mean this and must mean this. And then this goes here. And it's like, I got it. I did you, you just over explained to the joke a little bit. You know, when someone tells you a joke and then they're like, it's funny because, and you're like, not funny anymore. I get that a little bit with her writing. I have a feeling it's not gonna be like a true five-star book, a true five-star series for me. The story is so good. Like the story is really interesting. I'm really excited to see what happens. It's really convenient. Like a lot of convenient things happen in this story. It's kind of like bang, bang, bang a lot throughout the series. I feel like I'm talking negatively. It's still really good. I still really recommend the series in so far. I'm obviously not done this one. I've heard this is the best one. The story in this is definitely the best. I've heard a lot of people say that this series is kind of slow. I didn't find that at all. I just found it like really easy to read. It feels like very easy to comprehend. Like the world feels easy to understand, easy to build upon. The characters make sense. I like the characters. It's good. It's not like shocking me in any way, shape or form. I'm like flying through it. I'm glad that I went like straight into this after the Gilded Cage because the twist at the end of the Gilded Cage just kind of like it demanded to be answered. 
shirt. So this is the right book to go into. I am really liking it. Don't get me wrong. I feel like I'm sounding negative. I just, sometimes it's like, just, just show us something and then let us infer a little bit. Or like, if there's a big twist, instead of us finding out because someone told her, let's like, let's see it happen. Not giving me five star feelings, but I really like it. We'll see how I feel at the end. What's up? What the fuck is up? It is literally like unapologetically, apologetically, not proud of it. Been a month. What the fuck? It has to have been at least a month. I'm like halfway ish. I'm where I was when I last talked to you ish, probably. I mean, I have, li it's been a month. I don't know in what right mind that I was in that I was like, I'm gonna start filming this video when I did because I was just about to leave on like what I knew was gonna be a chaotic month of traveling and doing stuff. Why, why did I start? I literally thought there was a world that I could read the three books in the two days. That my friends is what I would call timelineness. It's time to get back into this. This series, I've just done a severe disservice, like The Gilded Cage. The first book in the series, I've read in two days. It was good. The second one, I read the first hundred pages, left it for two months, and now read the first, how many pages in am I? 192 pages. I didn't even stop on a chapter. I left it in the middle of a page. I'll have no idea what's going on. 192 pages, picking it up a month later, and I've done this series a disservice. Last time I talked to you about this book, I'm pretty sure. I mean, I literally have no idea. It was a month ago. I don't even know what I had for breakfast today, but was right before I was getting on my plane to go to Miami. If I had even attempted to read anything even remotely close to fantasy anywhere or anything that I've been doing lately, like in any of the places, I would have no idea what was fucking going on. So like, this was the right choice. Starting it was the wrong, but like deciding in the moment bright enough to be like maybe don't don't try and read this right now good choice i remember being like kind of into it i remember everything she said with her chest like she has any idea wait i'm dead i left a little star i remember doing this now a little star on this page so i would know where i was stopping because i was literally going to get on a plane and i knew at least i had the first day okay not like i know what went on before this regardless oh my god <laughs> but we're like exactly halfway through this book. We have a mission. It's a fantasy, we have a mission. They're nowhere near where they need to be to solve any of these problems. And my fear is that we're gonna be stuck doing this kind of slowly for a long time and then it's gonna wrap up really fast. I'm calling it now, that is my fear. If we get the big twists and the big outcome of this goddamn book being told to us and not shown to us, that will change my opinion on the entire series. The story, so good. The romance, cutesy, like it. I care about the couple, I care about the people. If it's not executed properly, like the story is so good, but if the storytelling aspects of it are executed in a way that makes me like, which I've gotten a couple of times throughout the series, I will A, be crushed because the story is so good. It has so much potential. And if it just feels rushed, I'm scared it's gonna feel rushed. I was scared going into this. I really, I want to love it. I just find the reading experience genuinely. It's really easy, but like maybe not 100% in a good way. Checking in now, page 219. We'll see if it wraps up really fast. I'll let you know when I think. We've gotten so much of like this first bit, it could go either way. <laughs> shadow of a doubt did this book a disservice because it took me what six seven weeks to read it in its entirety definitely wasn't all that into it at any point in time which definitely it would have hit harder if i was in it at even a moment in time i kind of honestly feel the same way about this that i did about the other two in the series where it kind of 
I don't know how to like word it because I the story is so good the story executed really well wrong executed poorly really great story if that makes sense I said the same thing about the gilded cage in my 24 hour reading video where it just kind of feels like we're being told things rather than shown them I will say the twists in this one most of them were executed well but I just I don't know if it's just the writing style or the fact that it's in third person I've never really noticed that I'm a third person hater even though I know a lot of people are third person haters which I get because then it, it does take you out of it a little bit but I don't even think it's that I don't even know if it's the writing style I don't know what it is I didn't really care like I didn't I didn't really care I was curious what was gonna happen in the story but like near the end of this when shit started hitting the fan last hundred pages of a fantasy series shit starts hitting the fan I was like I should give a fuck I didn't I didn't give a fuck at all story very good I wasn't emotionally invested in the characters very much I just feel like yeah it's just a matter of there's so much being told to us rather than shown like it just feels like we're like oh you didn't know this well let me tell you the whole entire also like the entire plot of this doesn't really matter when you get to the end I don't know it was kind of weird the story is so good the story is so good I feel a lot for the story I also like that with this Kiva our main female main character isn't like your normal warrior princess Sarah J mask esque female main character she is a healer and she has no fighting abilities even though she's trying it's not her strong suit which i feel like is a little bit more relatable to read about and it gives you like something different whereas i feel like every fantasy is like the strong female warrior main character that i could never relate to personally i still think that this series is definitely worth a read the story is so good like nothing i've ever read like the elemental magic the healing magic everything about it very interesting a very interesting magical system the world is really well thought out like i feel like i could picture the map i just wasn't emotionally connected i don't know if it was the third person or the fact that I don't know I don't know what it was about it and I've debated on this I'm gonna settle on giving it a 4.25 because I gave the prison healer a four which and it deserved a four because I didn't it didn't the writing style and the third personness and like the told not shown didn't bug me a ton in the first book so it's a four but the second one was a 3.75 the story in this definitely better I think it's a little bit better than a four so we're going 4.25 I'm not even confident in that I think the series is worth reading it's a really good story I know it sounds like I don't like it I still think you should read it and I'm glad that I read it I would never read it again but I enjoyed that I read it the one time you know what I mean No word of a lie days since I last week it's been a week and not only did I not talk to you I didn't read and not just from this I didn't read anything this is probably the longest I've read nothing in like a very long time um okay we're like almost halfway I'm on page 238 of exactly 600 every single one of those pages that have been read I read the first day that I was reading like I read in all one singular day I was totally fine reading it it's good it's really good the writing is good the story is good am I in a reading slump <laughs> what's happening I'm reading it and I, I'm not like itching to put it down. I'm not reading it. I, I haven't been reading it I've read that and in that reading time. I have just read it Especially when you're reading a fantasy when you're reading like something that's like real world If you're just like reading it, it can still like have impact, you know Even if you're like not really in the reading mindset, which I've never felt like this reading I'm just reading this and by that I mean there's no movie in my head So I'm reading about wings and falling and flying and knives and whatever and I'm picturing nothing It's just words on paper and my heart is shattering I decided to take a couple days off of reading in general not me doing this like a nervous tick because I'm nervous I wasn't gonna do and then just like life got really busy and I had stuff to do that like if I wanted to read I would have had to set out time So I was like, I'm just gonna not so we're gonna die back into this now because I hate leaving stuff unfinished a big part of me is like just pick up a little romance or pick up a book that like you love so much that'll make you fall in love with reading again I'm also like halfway through a reread of into the dark and I was kind of thinking of just like starting there I hate leaving books unfinished so we're gonna just try again it's been like 
actually genuinely a week I think since I last talked to you since I last read this so I'm hoping that I'm a little bit out of it now I've done a lot in my life I mean no I haven't but I mean like the days have passed so I feel like I can go in with like a semi blank slate hopefully I'm not in a reading slump anymore it's good it's really good I don't want to like say anything about it yet because I kind of feel nothing for it so that's not how I want to come at this because you guys know the first book is like one of my favorites and it got me out of a reading slump last time so I can't imagine this is the one that's gonna put me in not putting me into a reading slump I think I just it was gonna happen regardless I'm not gonna say anything about it now because I have legitimately zero thoughts my brain an empty living room that's it that's all that's going on in there also been really sick I was thinking that too because the first day that I read all of this was like the first day that I was really sick and it, I mean my brain is usually pretty empty but especially when I'm sick I'm gonna go with that's why because it makes me feel better <laughs> less doomed you know <laughs> Seriously, oh, I am struggling so hard. I'm struggling so hard. I have no motivation. I don't know. Oh, I loved the first one. I I don't think it was that I was sick. Fuck. I don't know if it's this book specifically, or if maybe I'm just not in a fantasy mood. I don't know what it is, but it's really starting to stress me out, which I kind of feel like is not worth its weight in marble. You know what I mean? Part of me wants to go to bed and fucking forget it. It's like 7 p.m. Um, part of me wants to just like pick up a romance, like a fun romance thing. Just for the summer just came out by Abby Jimenez and it's sitting on my shelf right over there on my TBR for the month. It would be successful to read it, but it just feels wrong. I like, there's something in my brain that just tells me I can't do the next task, which is just for the summer, which it's not. There's a whole other book in this video. I want it to be Two Twister Crowns. I've already decided I want to read Two Twister Crowns. What if I feel the same way? Like I liked One Dark Window even more than I liked Serpent in the Wings of the Night. And what if I just hate the second? I don't know what's going on. I'm complaining. Turn this into 15 minutes of Madison complaining. I literally never refer to myself as Madison. I always refer to myself as Maddie. That was weird. I've literally never slumped like this. Like I think in other times I've been like not really in the mood to read. Ugh. I've been in not the mood to read. I don't think I've ever slumped really like I have but like not like this it's normally that like the books just aren't hitting and it's like maybe I just I'm not in the mood and I'm something a little bit this is like truly what I'm reading I feel nothing for it I just think there's no way that this book is not good because the first two were so good what time is it right now what year is it it's like 8 30 right now it's not actually 7 which like I could just go to bed and try again tomorrow but that's another wasted night I am equally 50% push yourself through it make yourself do it like just get it done because I could just sit here and do it I could just read it or I could try and pick something else up and like we can identify if I'm actually in a reading slump and if that's the case feeling very discouraged to be honest my initial thought is to ask you guys like what do i do if you're even freaking watching this it was so long ago and i've already made a decision it's good like it is it's good i'm getting a headache from thinking uh pretty girls are not supposed to have to think this hard that was a joke obviously i was making a joke <laughs> literally a second ago um crisis averted okay it was so crazy back then literally right after i filmed the last time that i talked to you i picked this up and it felt like a movie again i could see it in my head again and i didn't want to jinx it so i didn't film a ton i honestly don't know how much i filmed over the last like two days finishing this book but my goodness did i finish her and my goodness did she hit i think it was a combination of the fact that i was sick and because i was sick i had so much to do or i felt like i had so much to do like i felt like i was letting myself down and all these things that i was supposed to have done so I was reading, but I wasn't listening. 
it did bring me out of it again it did bring me out of it again it did put me in it a little bit but i don't think it was the book i don't i'm really struggling to rate this i was not feeling great about it at a lot of points there was a point it was literally like 20 pages after i last talked to you wherever that was and there was a very sweet moment between rain and Araya, just like a very emotional moment that just i was like yeah never mind i love reading what the fuck happened there i'm really debating between like a 4.75 and it is a five star read like it really it really is a five star read i have some gripes with it but you have to remember i i rate on vibes i'm settling right now on a 4.75 we'll see how much i think about it i think this is a masterpiece written wise i really don't it's hard to talk about it because i was in such a bad place in reading and like i was still enjoying it like when i look back at the first like 250 pages that i read on that first day i was enjoying it there's like some moments that really stick out to me that i remember and i think i was i was still kind of in it i was like i was definitely starting to slum and it was just distressing so it's not this book's thing the second i got back into it i just like remembered why i love these worlds so much i think there's a lot about this book that i didn't remember from the first one like i think i should have read them much closer together that's just a fact. Also, the fact I just googled who the next book was about and I did not realize that it was about niche. The things that I would do to get an arc for that book, I cannot wait. The story in this is so beautiful. It is so fucking hard to do enemies to lovers twice with one couple in a series. And my God, did she do it to perfection. And the reason they were enemies, I did not see a way that they could get over it. I really did not see it. I wanted that for them. I mean, you know that they're eventually, right? Like they always end up together. I just, I honestly didn't see how it like could be possible. The way that she wrote this, story perfection i felt so many things reading this the latter half the first half i kind of felt nothing however when i think back on the moments that stood out to me i felt a lot now retroactively the second that i got to that halfway point it was just a very sweet moment between rain and Araya, and i like could finally kind of turn my brain off like i wasn't thinking about anything else i was actually reading and like listening to what i was reading in my own head i was like 100 back in it the violence in this violences like this is a violent fantasy one of the most violent fantasies like almost gory but that coupled with the like sweet very oh my god sweet romance like the love in this book the love in this series the found family in this series i cried a couple times i will not lie to literally anyone involved i loved this i don't know if i liked it better than the serpent wings of the night i felt like i feel like i read them too far apart and i just like almost can't compare them because they were read in very different mind spaces we'll see i'm gonna put my final rating up and i'll do it again now on where it sits but it's like it could be a five star read i'm gonna see how much i think about it i wasn't enjoying reading i was enjoying the book and and then when I got back to enjoying reading, it broke my heart into a million pieces. The story was so well done. The magic in the world in this series is done to perfection. It's giving high fantasy, but it's introduced to you really slowly. And like the romance is such a big part of it that like you can very easily catch on, but you're so deep enveloped in the world. I think it's a five. My like I'm really I'm living there with them. And looking back, if you've read this, it's not a spoiler. The one very last fight scene, I can picture it. Like I feel like I see it in my head. I really loved it. I really can't wait for the next one. It's like a five star series regardless because we have a five star a six star and like a 4.75 or five so far five star series very happy that i finished it i loved it it was a monster of a book the only thing i will say that was like kind of my only one small tick and i only had like two or three moments of this that there were things or conversations like how something ended action wise or like a conversation that would have been nice to have about like something how do you say anything without saying anything i'm trying not to spoil anything there were a couple of moments that i wanted more like there was moments that i feel like i would have liked a conversation about decisions that were made or things that are happened or like times that i didn't understand how we got from point a to point b which i get that it might have been mundane it was like action and then it was like oh now we've moved on it was like i didn't totally know how things ended sometimes only great but it doesn't bug me it didn't take away from the story i can see how she made the creative choice that this would have been 800 pages if she did it every single time and this is like the perfect length nothing should have been taken out of this maybe something could have been added but i'm like happy as it stands i enjoyed every moment of reading this once i got back into it don't let the mere tears that was happening back there remind feeling that I would never read again and enjoy it, scare you. <laughs> Thank you.
The sun is quite literally about to go down right now and I stopped in the middle of a chapter so I could talk to you before it got literally black in here. Judicic crowns, I'm like a little bit into it now, 126 pages to be exact, right in the middle of a chapter, right? Amazing. I do feel exactly the same way that I felt about the Ashen Starker's King starting it where I'm kind of like, wow, I waited too long. I kind of have no idea what's going on. Where I am now, I think I'm completely caught up again. Like I remember what all the cards do, but I will say when I started it and we were getting Elm's perspective, I was like, literally, who is that? Who is that? From the first book, he's the prince. If you've read either of them, I mean, you know who he is. So I don't know whose context I am giving that to. There's something about Rachel Gillick's writing that is just, I don't know. It's like, it hits a spot. I've annotated so much of this already, if you cannot tell. Loving it, clearly. It's so easy to read. Like, I feel like I'll look up and I'll be like, oh my God, I just read like 40 pages without like even noticing that time had elapsed. That's the kind of writing that I get from Rachel Gillick. I don't totally know how I feel about the romance we're going to get in this one so far. Like, I feel like they both have villain origin stories for the reason that they're going to do what they're end up going to do, that they're going to do what they end up going to do. That they're gonna do what they end up doing. Wow, broken brain today. I do feel like I kind of, 126 pages in, wish we were getting more of Raven and Elizabeth. Like I kind of wish we got more on that plot. I will say I'm not disliking the plot that we are getting and it does like very much so just pick up where the first book leaves off. Like it's very good so far. I'm very interested in it. The magic and the world in this, it's just like so easy to dive into and like the gothicness of it and how she writes it. I feel like you can picture it so clearly in your head. Like I just feel like I'm picturing a miniature town and I can look in on it and like see figures moving and they're doing their thing like I feel like I can really see this book but it's a very specific viewing experience like sometimes I feel like I'm a character in a book but with this book for some reason I feel like I'm looking in on them and they're in like a very small town there's something about the way that blunder is described that makes me feel like I am looking in on like a miniature Christmas town I don't know how else to explain it I'm definitely not in a reading slump I'm definitely doing fine now that the stress has lifted off of my life a little bit I just feel like I'm enjoying reading again it's very easy to get lost in this world I really like her writing like I really like what she's doing with it I have no idea where my thoughts are gonna land right now I still feel like I felt more in One Dark Window, but I'm literally a quarter of the way through, like almost exactly a quarter of the way through. So we'll see where it ends up. I just feel like I dived back into this world. And now that I remember everything, like who everybody is and like what all the cards do, etc., like what actually happened at the end of the first book, I feel like I'm in there and I'm going to really like it. Happy bunny with this book. I feel very happy that I picked this up because it's been a long time coming and finally doing it. Only like a couple months late. <laughs> Guys, okay, I get it. I get the hype, it's good. It's really good, you were right, I can admit. I should have read this sooner. Five star, motherfucking read. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Rachel Gillick, she does this world that is like so easy to get lost in. Like I just feel like I can picture and imagine this world and it's just like so unique. It stands on its own, which when you read as much as I read, a lot of worlds get mixed in together. But this one is living like very separately in my brain. Like she did such a good job constructing the world in this. I really didn't know how I was going to feel about this. I feel like the second that we got in and we were getting that second love plot, it picked Picked up literally right where One Dark Window leaves off, which if you've read One Dark Window, like it's it just it picks up we're missing someone so i didn't know how this was going to wrap up or where this was going to go i feel like i thought trying to fix what concluded one dark window would be the plot the fact that it wasn't i appreciate because the plot in this plot tit i ended up actually really loving the second love story in this like the second romance i love that we had two stories that converged at the end gave very good storytelling like the way that the plots came together in the end and everything that led up to them was so interesting i think the thing that i love 
loved so much about this series and about this book it's not about this series it's very specifically about this book is her timing her timing in this story we're following two very different stories we're following raven and elizabeth in the first book and then a second plot line a second romance plot line but another plot line that does tie into the whole plot line and every single time that you're in one of the stories you get like really deep in there you forget about the other one and then something huge happens and you flip the page and you're like oh my god there's a whole other story going on right now okay i guess we're back over there but then two pages into that you're like oh my god i want to stay in this story what's happening here what's going on here did that make any sense she got you so hooked in each story every single time that it switched perspectives you were upset but in a good way like not in a bad way i caught on that that's what she was doing she timed them so well fantasy series that are like impossible to put down are hard to come by because they're usually like there's so much thought going on this one just the storyline had me so hooked that with the world the gothicness like the story of it all I loved this. It's a true five-star read. It's a true five-star duet for me. This will live forever in my head. If you guys have something that's similar to this, let me know because I think that I could be a gothic fantasy girly. And with that being said, we did get a five-star in this video, which shocking, shocking considering how badly I clearly did not want to read some of these books, okay? This is a chaotic while. I've also started some series since starting this video. Just chaos all across the board in every way, shape, and form. If you guys made it to here, thank you so much because I know this one was a little bit crazy timeline wise a little disorganized and i'll see you in the next one love you bye that was easily timeline wise the most chaotic video i have filmed in my entire life